Hey everybody, I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. You're watching Open. Welcome to BXRX. It's open and we're wide open. Today's show, we'll speak to the co-founder of an organization to learn about uh, how he is impacting his community. Then it's Black Music Month and we'll be joined by a, a member of the 1980s music group, Midnight Star. We'll highlight the significance of a historic event being celebrated in Cincinnati, Ohio. And after that, We'll check in with a friend of the show whose organization is celebrating a major milestone. And then finally, we'll sit down with a Navy veteran, an author, and philanthropist whose book was the number one best-selling autobiography on Amazon. So stay tuned. All of this and more is headed your way because we are wide open. Here we go. Hey, I'm the Dr. Bob Lee, and you're watching Open. It's that live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. You can stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guest is a music artist, an actor, a film TV producer, and a humanitarian. He's here with us today to speak about uh, his nonprofit organization, Power One Foundation, and to set, shed some light on all the wonderful things that it's, uh, it's doing in our community. So please welcome to the show, Andre Roberson. Andre, welcome. Hi, how you doing? Thank nice you so much. Nice to see you, man. Yes, All right. nice to see you again. Yeah. So where are you sitting right now? What, what town are you in? So I'm in Orange County. I'm in Orange, Orange County in California. Uh, California? Yes. All right. All the way from California. Um, yeah, hey, tell absolutely. us about the power of one, that, that wonderful foundation that, uh, that you started. Uh, well, Power of One Foundation is a community-based uh, collaborative nonprofit. Uh, what we do is we concentrate on food insecurity, which we've done, I've done personally for the last 17 years, Power of One since 2019. Started another nonprofit with my mom and my family, for no one left behind. So we've been in the community helping community members, um, yeah, over the last 17 years and providing essential resources. Yeah, and this is needed, of course, out there in California, a lot of our communities, but you know, you see some of those pictures in California of people in tents and things of that nature, um, and they try to clean it up, but people still need help. Where do people go and how do they get food? It's organizations like yours, and we thank you for that, uh, you know, what you're doing and all that you're doing in our community to help out. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, de it's greatly needed, you know, coming out, out of the pandemic, uh, you know, in the country opening up, people thinking like, oh, everything's back to normal. But actually, when you really look at the statistics and the numbers, food insecurity uh, yeah. actually got worse. Um, and then you look at the housing crisis and the homeless crisis that's going on, uh, not just in California, but all across the United States. Um, nonprofits like mine are definitely an essential resource yeah. right now. And it's very so much needed. Um, and then you started something called Poof. How did that come about? Yeah. So, you know, Oof. when we started doing all these distributions and different things, uh, everybody started cutting the name short and saying poof. Like, yeah. And then, you know, when you sit upside down and change the D, it's spelled right. food. <laughs> so uh, we got our poof family, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and it's something that stuck with us. So we really love yeah. it. And what are some of the uh, uh, communities that you service in California? Well, in California um, and also internationally, we're serving Orange County, Los Angeles, San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also into Mexico, Honduras, um, El Salvador, um, and wow. Guatemala as well. We've yeah. been resources. And uh, who, who, who are some of your major funders? Uh, for us, you know, we have private donors that to this day we still don't know who they are. 
but they will write us a $250,000 check or a $100,000 check to help our organization and the initiatives that we support. The community mm -hmm. really has supported us. All our dollars have come from community members. Um, and then we have partnerships with wonderful organizations like Home Depot, um, IKEA here in Costa Mesa, uh, as well as other, other other corporations that are really, really supporting what we do. Mm. Uh, Hyundai helping during our Christmas program, Medica Talent, uh, which actually supports our Christmas programs and other programs. Yeah. And we have a birthday program that we launch, Birthday Matters. So we do oh, birthday yeah. parties for uh, kids that would not normally be able to celebrate their special day. Yeah. Are you related to the Robeson family? Yes, I am. <laughs> you are? <laughs> uh, yes, I am. I knew it because they were saying Robinson. I said, no, Robeson. And they said, yeah, Robeson. So I said, I wonder if he's related yes. to Paul Robeson and all those guys. I mean, yeah. That whole family. Yes, yeah. You are? That whole lineage is in my bloodline, and I'm honored to have it in my bloodline. And it's uh, I got a chance to go down that rabbit hole a couple of years ago when um, I was getting ready to work on a project that had to do uh, with my great grandfather. And um, I was hoping that they'd still get a chance to work on that project and I could be involved with it, but it was definitely a great history learning lesson. Yeah, well, when that happens, you make sure you, uh, you let us know more about it. You come back on again, all right? Absolutely, that would be my pleasure. Have you been to any of these countries? You said you go beyond Orange County, California. Have you been to personally to these countries or you send people out? Uh, actually, I go personally myself. So right now I have an open invitation to Honduras for the items that I just sent over there. So I'll be going to Honduras soon. I'm in Mexico all the time. So we have a orphanage and also a school over there, also partnering with different rotary clubs over there to uh, create an impact um, in Mexico. Yeah. El Salvador and Guatemala, I didn't go. I sent the shipping container, uh, but I would love to touch down one time. Yeah. Wow. And, and you started this how long ago? I've been doing it 17 years. Started it with my mom and my grandmother in 2006. Then uh -huh. uh, I wrote a song called Power of One. And my mom was like, you need to do something with that. I don't know when you're going to do something with it. So uh -huh. right before the pandemic started, I started Power of One. And uh, that was one of the biggest blessings that I did by listening to my mom because it actually uh, brought us to the forefront with what yeah. all, everything that God's given me to this day. You moms know. know. For that moment. You know moms know. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> moms know best. <laughs> Can you talk about your work as a musician, actor, and film and TV producer? Absolutely. You know, I've been really blessed. I've, I've gotten a chance to work on a wonderful TV show from Days of Our Lives. Emerging Lens right there was an interview on a new show that I was um, a part of where they went in to interview me and my history and the projects that I've produced and directed. Uh, uh, I've, got, I've gotten a chance to, uh, I was in Notorious. I've done everything from Nike for Taco Bell, Fox Sports West. Um, I've graced the screen with uh, the likes of Kobe May, rest in peace, to Chris Rock. Uh, you know, I've been blessed. Yeah. And so I got on the other side to be able to say, okay, how can I produce my own projects? And started getting into that. Yeah. Music-wise, um, I've always been bitten by that bug, released uh, two albums under one PA, and now uh, we're doing it through uh, Power of One Records this time, through Sony. Uh, the Orchard just released my single, My Lady, which I'm really excited about. It's getting a good buzz about it. Uh, just yeah. launched the video. So uh, really excited to see where uh, this thing is going to take us, and we're finishing up the EP right now. So really excited and got something to say in my music this time around. Look at that. You're busy. A philanthropist, giving, and when you give, you get. You get by giving. Yes. It's, it's one of the paradoxes of life, you know. And thank you for all that Absolutely. you do. Wow. You're in it. I didn't know you did this thank much. You. I mean, you know, you can read a little bit about you and everything, but uh, you got to have the man tell it himself. When you sit down and talk to somebody, they really bring it to light, you know. So Absolutely. No, this is my passion. So these these albums are out and the film that yeah, you so under they're under LaFell. Yeah, yeah. Look about my first two albums were more like singing albums. These latest albums I've been doing uh have a have a little bit more uh rap 
and singing vocals into it. So I took my style and just blended it in because a lot of people tell me like, man, you rap really good. Why don't you do some? But rap you're a rapper too. And, yeah, rapper too. So We're celebrating 50 yeah. years of hip hop, and you got it all going on. You got the vocals, you got the. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you spit your own 16 inside busy. of the record. Absolutely, my own 16. I wrote it. You know, I'm not true <laughs> artist like that. <laughs> you if know, I it wasn't written by AI. <laughs> if I ask you to spit 16, you can do it. Oh, man, that's what I do. I can go from All right, the top here we go. Dome, a one, you know, a two, a one, two, three, four. I got to take a spit 16 from the top of the dome. I'm with Dr. Bob Lee. We take we hitting different terror domes. I spend my life giving back. I got to take it. I can't hold back. I'm headed to the top. Got to feed my soul. Got to give it to the world. Let them know this is where I'm coming from. G.O.D. He gave me a mission. I got to complete. I know that I can't stop. I got to move my feet. It's like the footprints in the sand. I can't try to be the man. I give my 10%, my tie back. I can't hold back. And no, I never lack. The knowledge keeps me going forward. So I strive, I strive, I get on. And let, oh, there you yeah. go. Andre rapping <laughs> off the top of the dome, the making rap. his living on the microphone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my contribution. <laughs> that's, hey, good. that's good, that's good, that's good. So the film stuff, what's the next film project? Um, the next film project I'm working on is really the Power of One documentary because, uh, you know, we got a chance to feed um, three million people in one year during uh, the pandemic, and yeah. that was life-changing for us. And we documented it all. Yeah. So for us, it's really um, going in to finish this documentary to show people or one, the power of what one person can do, the power of what one yeah. body can do. Um, and really excited about that project. We're in the middle of um, editing it and piecing mm -hmm. it together. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. That's beautiful, man. You're doing a whole lot. And when you say we're in the process of doing all, who, who are all these people? You want to give them a shout out? Show them some love? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Um, for us, we just partnered uh, with a company, Limitless XP, who's coming in to help us actually produce a lot of things. They're also uh, helping us um, produce our Stop the Violence uh, Unite the World uh, show as well that we'll be having at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. But they're coming in to help us produce this and, and make sure that the story can be told the right way. And they're a wonderful company out of New York uh, that we're looking, looking forward to uh, collaborating with and we'll be making some trips to new york Beautiful. Uh, so hopefully i'll be able to see you when i'm there great where can we find you on the uh, internet or social media i'm on all the social media platforms everywhere from facebook instagram to TikTok, andre lafell um and uh yeah you can follow me and then also got our website power one foundation andre lafell.com um yeah and we got all the current events there and and uh Come out and volunteer with us. We would love to have you know, Andre LaFell Robinson, actor and co founder. Power of one. Woo. That's All you it. need is one. One God. That's God it. is Just good. One. Thank you, Andre. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Thank you. You got it. And we'll see you again. Good luck in everything that you're doing, man. Thank you. You got it. We'll take a break. I've got more coming up next. Drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Can you see anything different as a pill? No, no. You don't know? Fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. There is only one thing that will save somebody's life. That is naloxone nasal spray. Fentanyl. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. Why would drug dealers put a lethal dose of fentanyl in drugs if they know it's so harmful? Really just all about the money. I just didn't realize that one pill could change your whole life. More kitchen now.
How do you know when you've made the right decision? It's the feeling you get in your gut. The one that tells you what's right or wrong. It's the one that says, sure, I can have a drink. Or the feeling that says, okay, I've been drinking. Now what? It's the voice inside you that says, I'm buzzed. Better leave the car when it's time to go. Plan ahead. Catch a sober ride. Buzz driving is drunk driving. And welcome back. I'm the Doc Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. And our next guest is a singer and member of the 1980s music group Midnight Star. He joins us to reflect on his career, speak about his induction into the 2021 Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame, and to highlight the historic significance of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame. Welcome to the show. Reggie Calloway is in the house. Reggie, how are you? Great, Dr. Bob Lee. How are you doing today? Thank Good. you for having me. Are you a 2023 inductee also? We're a 2022 inductee, but Midnight Star. Yeah. And in 2023, we are, our Calloway brothers are listed as top influencers for music. Yeah, I know you're getting awards all over the place. And that's the Cincinnati <laughs> Black Music Walk of Fame 2023 inductees. Uh, no, 2022. Okay. All yeah, right, we're, I'm, we're, I'm just, uh, well, you'll probably get it again this year. Yeah, well, um, this, this year, because it's the grand opening, then uh, the 21 and 22, uh, we're all coming back. So for people who don't know, give us a list, a short list of some of the songs that you guys are well known for. Well, with Midnight Star, which is where it all started, and the, the first one that knocked all the doors down was, of course, Freakazoid. Freakazoid, <laughs> that's right. No parking on the dance floor. No parking on the dance floor. Slow jam. Slow uh, jam. Operator. Operator. And uh, and the Midas Touch, of course. The Midas Touch, yep. Yeah. That was a big one, especially on WBLS radio. Yeah. Now then, as, as Callaway, I Want to Be Rich. I Want to Be Rich and, by Callaway. And as pro production projects, uh, people don't know that we did Meeting in the Ladies' Room, Casanova, Joy for Teddy Pendergrass. Gladys Knight's Grammy-winning Love Overboard. Natalie Cole jumps off my heart. And, and then there's, of course, a, the body talk for the deal. Yeah. And we also signed Babyface and L.A. Reed to mid-start music. So wow. It's been a wonderful career. You've been busy. And it doesn't stop here. There's more. No, no can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's more. There's more. A whole lot more. Um... How was it in uh, how was it being inducted? How did that feel being inducted into uh, the 2021 Cincinnati Walk of Fame along with the other members of Midnight Star? It was incredible. I mean, a couple of monumental things for some of my Midnight Star brothers and sisters I hadn't really seen in, in a lot of years. Brother and I left the group in '86. Yeah, so you hadn't seen. You know, that was the first time we were all together since that time. Plus, uh. My brother and I being from Cincinnati, being raised and, and bred, not born, but raised and bred in Cincinnati. Yeah. It, it meant the world because we're looking at, uh, you know, friends that go back as far as elementary school, to fourth grade, that are still right. with us, still supporting us, still following us. Uh, you know, and then all of our teachers and school teachers and martial arts instructors, just an incredible uh, family affair and family there as well. So it, it was a, just super monumental. Just, it takes you back to those days of being that little boy walking down the streets of uh, Cincinnati, headed back from Coney Island. <laughs> on the the yeah. evening of the riots, when the riots yeah. struck out, we were walking through the neighborhood, and, and people were saying, "Where, where y'all look? Where y'all going? It's a riot going on." Yeah. <laughs> we got history that is deep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, talk about that history. Speak about your journey as a musician, uh, your time as a member of Midnight Star. It's a great journey, you know. It starts, uh, you know, we're from Louisville, Kentucky, originally as far as our grandparents and parents. And during that time, we got the pleasure of being able to, uh, you know, walk to our grandparents' house and play on their piano and start to get bit by the bug. And then moving, <laughs> <laughs> moving to Cincinnati was incredible because now the elementary school had a choir, it had a small orchestra. You know, so we began to see what real instruments were like. 
We moved next door to a family that uh, that had a band that rehearsed in the basement, the McCoys. So we, we could go next door and watch that and experience what live instruments were all about. And then Cincinnati was full of the talent shows that uh, made things really, really popular. College shows, uh, high school shows. So the immersion of music and, and athletics was very, yeah. very, very pure. Uh, and then, of course, I had a lot of uh, my brother and I both had different local bands in town from Motown Masters and the MD Fire Department. And Vincent uh, had a very, very popular band, Powerhouse. Yeah. And eventually, you know, we formed our own uh, sort of a family group out of my uh, college experiences from composition and theory. In order to get some of those ideas, you got to have your own group, right? So we formed Sunchild, which was my brother Vincent, my brother Greg, uh, Johnny Jones, the next door neighbor, and uh, uh, Daryl Calloway, then Pete Jordan. But uh, that group led to Midnight Star. When that group broke up, that's when I say, when I go back to school this year, I want to put together one of the greatest groups of all times. Went to my, my partner, Bill Simmons, who also was a member of Sunchild in you know, the latter years. Yeah. Uh, you know, we began to put together the piece of Midnight Star and then Kenneth Gant, Jeffrey Cooper, and Linda Lipscomb, you know, vocals, incredible yeah. vocals. Uh, tell me class. something, Reg. Reg, mm -hmm. tell me, you know, and, and all groups is always that crazy group of people and that, that the, the people that are nice and mellow, even with basketball teams. Who were the crazy people in your group? You know, and what, what, what did they do that made it stand out? <laughs> well, you know, every, don't let me bring let me, don't, don't let me open up a can of worms here now. But you know, yeah, I was say, something our, that made it you, fun and yeah, unusual. Our crazy, yeah, even our crazy was good. So <laughs> crazy. But uh, every everyone had a character and everyone had a, a position and a role that they played uh -huh. in the group. Awesome. Uh, uh, you know, one of our funniest characters was was Kenneth Gant. He, he kept us all laughing. <laughs> he was always fun. You know, always jokes and. and uh, you know, uh, Bo Watson was uh, the, the practice guru, the exercise guru. Uh, my brother Vincent, of course, was the exercise trainer, who's yeah. now also grandmaster in martial arts. And, uh, you know, to believe how Blender could just hang with all us guys and just make it work. We, 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 uh, you know, we just had a wonderful, wonderful time. We never had any problems. Everybody uh, contributed. And everybody felt a part. So it was a machine that. And you guys were always on tour. Who did you like being on tour with? Because you played with so many different artists, you know, throughout your career. Oh, man. Um, you know, one of, one of the, the big tours that, uh, that Dick Griffey, president of the Solar Records, put together was really exciting. He came from concert promotion. So when we had so many hits on the label at one time, put together the Solar Records tour, the Solar tour. Yeah. That was us, Shalimar, Climax, Lakeside, so many just great things. But you know, every time we played with somebody, it, it was great. Like one of the funniest experiences it was, was opening for Rick James. You know, that was that was that was an experience because you know Rick had a philosophy that he didn't want anybody in the hallway backstage when he was going to the stage. So here we are in our dress room. You know, you, you can't come outside. You got to stay in the dress room for our crew and the audience when it comes out. So that's what we learned the hard way, that when you're an opening act, you got some dues to pay. And, and it's not just when you get on stage, you can't use any subwoofers or you can't even use any back lights. Uh -huh. You come with a whole lot of things you have to deal with. Yeah. And then when you become the headliner, you know, you, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> but, but a lot of parts of it you understand, because if the band that's on before you is moving the equipment all around, it's time for you to come out as the headliner then it takes too much time to reset the stage. Right, right. So certain, certain concessions have to be made, and everybody has to work together to make for a yeah. smooth evening for the whole crowd. Yeah. Hey, before we uh, go, they're going to give me uh, about another minute and a half, two minutes. Uh, talk about the Black Music Walk of Fame. How important is that in your life? And uh, tell us, you know, how you got involved. Yes, you know, just uh, it's so great to to be recognized, you know, we have lots of goals. Uh, the Black Music Walk of Fame came along, we were, and we were just cheering it on. You know, Commissioner mm -hmm. Reese has done a great job to assemble and pull together the state and city and make it all happen. But what it means is that you know Cincinnati and that whole area, there's so much talent uh, between Bootsy mm -hmm. Collins, Ruben Longmire, greats that have come out of there, you know, and they're nearby. We'll be stretching out to Cleveland with the OJs. You know, just so much great talent. Um, 
we, uh, you know, James Brown was just super influential on our lives when we had our uh, grand opening for our mother's flower shop. James Brown came and, and did the grand opening for her and us. And, you know, that's when I'm Black and I'm Proud was out. So then let us know as little kids that hey, this music thing is really powerful. There's a lot that can be done. So to see him be honored, to see everyone come together, to see the world recognize that out of this melting pot, you know, Ohio players, Lakeside, it's just incredible what uh, this whole uh, valley has to offer. And uh, we're just part, uh, great to be a part of it. You know, the land of funk is the land of funk. And we've all got together and created new sounds, new waves, and the whole deal led me on right now to also doing specialty finance. So if, you, uh, if you're an artist and you're making royalties, we're here to help you with our company sound royalties. That's a very, very um, incredible part of my life that I'm here about right now to be able to put money in artists' hands to allow them to invest in themselves mm -hmm. in this independent era that we're in. So it all comes together. The more recognition, the more people know about you know, Callaway Brothers, what we do, Midnight Star, and Sound Royalties, and how uh, this music finance keeps this world going around. And I definitely want to meet our brother, uh, Andre Robeson. I think he's on a great path as well. Yeah. I'm right here in Los Angeles. So we, we got to connect, keep connecting the dots. And like you said, I'll be in New York as well too, uh, Dr. Bob. Hope to well, see you soon. When you come Looking over, let's break some bread. But uh, let me know. Uh, give me your, your website and social media where people can follow you. Great. Uh, our website is ReggieCalloway.com. Social media is all uh, Reggie Calloway all across the board. Uh, looking forward to hearing from anyone and everyone, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's uh, uh, Twitter or, or you know, any of the, the regular ones as well. Yeah. we we'll just at Reggie Calloway and uh, ReggieCalloway.com and we're here and looking forward to talking to you. Callaway official is uh, the Callaway Brothers. So let's rock. Reggie, nice talking to you. When you come, let's get together and break some bread, okay? I'm looking forward to that. I, 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 I love New York, New York food. <laughs> there you go. Reggie Callaway, singer, member of Midnight Star. Thank you for your contributions to our community. We appreciate you, man. We'll take a quick break right here. I've got more on the way back right here on Open. Done the hard part. You quit smoking. Now do the easy part and get scanned for lung cancer. If you smoked, you may still be at risk, but early detection could save your life. Talk to your doctor and learn more at savedbythescan.org. It's not time yet. It's time. Donating pet food is one of the many ways you can help families in your community. Pets and people belong together. Learn more at petsandpeopletogether.org. Dear moms and dads, what you have achieved here today is going to help us and our futures. It is why we are coming up on stage to collect your diplomas. You know it's true. Mom, love you always. Everything I do, I do when you graduate, me. they graduate. Visit finishyourdiploma.org to find free and supportive adult education centers near you. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. And welcome back. Welcome and thank you for tuning in and checking it all out. We really, really appreciate you. Our next guest is a... Uh, the proud founder and executive director of Meet the Writers Incorporated. She's here today to talk about how her organization has connected uh, students with authors from all over the world for over eight years. She's been doing it. She's out in the community making it all happen. Welcome to the show, Michelle Weissman. Michelle, welcome. 
Bob, it's so great to see you. Thanks for having me. And I am so honored to be on the lineup today. Always a pleasure to see you. Now, um, what are some of the books in back of you? I'm only kidding. <laughs> you have an hour or do you have a day? <laughs> Just give me you. two. In fact, I've read them all, so I'm happy to tell you about them. <laughs> but Michelle, tell us, you know, we always want to find out about Meet the Writers. Tell us a little bit about it. And how have you, uh, what have you been up to lately? So one of the things we did this spring was we were back at the Highbridge Green School in the Bronx, a middle oh, yeah. school in the Bronx, where it all started in 2015. I remember. With a visit by author Tori Maldonado. And, and, and tell us a little bit about the Meet the Writers. So one of the things we did this spring was support Reading Joy Week at Highbridge Green School. Mm -hmm. So we brought it three authors, one for each grade, for sixth graders, we brought George O'Connor, who was the graphic artist of the Olympians. For seventh graders, we brought mm -hmm. the author of The Night Diary, Ria Haranandani, talking about her family's experience with uh, partition in India. And then for eighth graders, we brought Ashley Woodfolk, the author of Nothing Burns As Bright As You. And this is about sort of a, a special relationship between friends. Yeah. And what was so exciting was that every student got to meet an author and got a signed book to keep. And that's what Meet the Writers is all about, right? Tell us, tell us a little bit more for the people who really don't know about it. That's it. In a way, it's very simple. We connect authors to students in schools. Whether they like it or not, they're involved in the program. They get to meet the author and they get a book to keep. And so part of the program is they get to approach the author and have their book signed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the conversation is simple, like, I love your book. How many books have you written? But also it's very profound. Kids say, I love this book because I've never seen a character like me before in a book. And I see myself in this book. Yeah. And sometimes the author might say to a kid, I love your hair. And I feel like those are very impactful moments. Like you see that the kids like, the author loved my hair. Like it just, it all feels very important. Yeah. So I feel like it's about empathy, seeing characters and about identity. And so I think yeah. the program is about both of those things. Yeah, and you went back to your original, the original school where you started, but the Meet the Writers has come a long way in helping to foster a love for reading in our communities and especially our, our public schools, you know, how do you see it? How, how far has it gone? How, how do you, wh from once you first started to now, what, what do you see how, how it has helped a whole lot of people? I do, and it's kind of incredible. I feel like the time adds up. We started with this, let's try this, you know, one author at one school in the Bronx. Now we've reached over 45,000 students and we've given away over 25,000 signed books. And I feel like the numbers are powerful to me. Mm -hmm. And I just want to be around, you know, eight more years and sort of double and quadruple that. Yeah. I mean, I, it's been incredible. So uh, I always say to a school, let's do one author visit. Let's try it out. And that's the best, you know, sell or experience to expand the program in a school. Yeah. So maybe we bring an author to one grade and then it expands to bring an author to kids in every grade. And now you have latched on to the National Ambassadors for Children's Literature. You partnered with them um, and you're going to visit the Brooklyn Children's Museum, the Green School. You're going to do that again? How big is that for students to see that and to be a part of that? I mean, it's it's been, I think, very powerful for students. What's interesting to me is I've been I've met students in middle school and we've been doing this long enough that I then mm -hmm. see the kids in high school. Like I saw a girl, you know, bring the, her signed book from middle school to show poet Nikki Grimes when she met her at her high school. And so that. That's mm -hmm. very powerful. I see that kids connect these experiences or they'll say to their younger siblings, oh, it's so exciting. We just met this author. Just wait a few years and you'll meet this author, too. I mean, once we work with a school, often a kid 
who may not have books of their own in their house and certainly not signed to them, you know, get this growing stack of books that are theirs. And it's it's been very powerful to see that. I mean, I, I think it resonates with kids. I think when we ask kids where do books come from, they might say the bookstore or the library, but then they see that people who look like them or their parents or their cousins, they're writing these books. Yeah. They're editing these books. They're they're illustrating these books. And it's like, oh, I could do that too. And yeah. I, I think that's been very powerful. And one of the things, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, finish, finish. I guess I was going to say one of the things we did this year is in addition to bringing authors to meet students, we're bringing authors to meet teachers who are then affecting students' lives. And so I think you had a picture of Sonia Manzano, who I think a lot of people know as Maria on Sesame Street. Yeah. We were able to connect her through the New York City Public Schools Literacy Collaborative to teachers and coaches in uh, kindergarten to 12th grade. And I feel like that was powerful in a different way because then they could meet Sonia and learn about her journey from being a kid in the South Bronx to becoming this acclaimed actor, author, and speaker and sort of hearing her story. I think they could bring back and talk to kids at their schools. So that was another way I feel like that we are impacting kids. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful thing. Kids go on to become collectors of these wonderful books and then they get a chance to meet the artist up close and personal and get a signed autograph copy of the book. And then when they get a little older, they can say, hey, look, this is my, this is my wonderful book collection. You know, I want to thank you guys. Uh, do you have any upcoming events that, would, that we should know about? You know, I have to say the summer is a little slow. We're, slow. We're kind of wrapping up for the school year. Yeah. We're going to do a few events with an, another amazing organization called Read Alliance that takes teens in a community and partners them with kindergarten and second graders. And so we're doing events to bring an author to the connect authors to the teens and yeah. also to the K to second grade youth. So I'm excited about that this summer. And then in the fall, we're going to actually, as one of our programs, we're going to help launch author Renee Watson, who is also kind of a Harlem uh, personality and amazing author. Yeah. She we're going to help launch her a book in one of her series. So that's exciting. Some of the things we have on tap for this uh, for next school year. Michelle, where can we go to find out more about uh, uh, all, all that you're doing? Because, you know, you got parents, students, teachers. The yeah. whole community wants to know more school. about what you're doing so we can follow and, uh, and find out what it's all about. Because we have to continue to read throughout the summer. Maybe Absolutely. we should do a reading I have contest. My stack of to be read. Yes, I have a to be read list. I'm reading a book called Mascot yeah. by Charles Waters and Tracy Sorrell. I'm reading a book called Sunshine by Jared Kazatska. I have lots of books on my to be to be read look yeah. list. Do you have I'd that on your website? Read. You have the, the, uh, the books know, to read on your website? On Instagram. Yeah, I just posted on Instagram. I'd love for people to follow meettherwriters.org or meet the writers on Instagram and uh -huh. Facebook. I'd love to hear from school partners, authors, illustrators, and always, of course, funders. There she is, the executive director, Meet the Writers Incorporated, uh, Michelle Weissman. We, we thank you so much for the, all that you're doing in our community, you know, and continue doing uh, the great work that you're doing. We're going to follow you. We're going to try to read the books that you recommend on your website. Um, you, all have, you also have social media that we should know about? Yeah, we're on Instagram, mo mostly a little bit on Facebook. I'd love to hear from people. Yeah. Bob, it's always such an honor to be on the show. I, I really appreciate it. Well, you're always welcome to come back and share, okay? Continue to read, 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 read. It's important. Of course. All right. Michelle, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Bob. All right. We'll take another break right here. We'll come back. I've got a little bit more right here on Open. Kids! I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want 
we'll talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Kids, you all right? This family's prepared. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Go to nyc.gov slash readyny or call 311 for more information. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. Bro, you gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. Escúchame. En esta casa, los hombres no lloran. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? Thanks for hearing me out, bro. Appreciate it. You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? Yeah, hey, welcome back. You know, our next guest is a, he's a military veteran. Thank you for your service. We thank him for his service all the time. A philanthropist, thank you for giving. Thank you for all that you do. And an author, thank you for putting the pen to the paper. He's here with us today to speak about his, his new book, Prove Him Wrong. We're going to keep it new for a little while so we can make some money from it and because people need to know about it. He has an autobiography reflecting on his immigrant journey from Jamaica to the United States, his struggles, his triumphs, his role as a father. Please welcome to the show, Andrew Manat. Andrew, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Thank man. you. Thank you for nice having me. Nice to see you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So you, you, thank you for your military service. Uh, you've been in the Navy. Um, tell us about that whole experience in it, coming out of it, and then how did you get it all started? Well, it, it was a journey. It, it was because at 18, I joined the Navy. Yeah. Um, been through boot camp, the whole situation, got stationed in the aircraft carrier, and first assignment was the Persian Gulf. Oh. You know, mm. and during the Gulf War. Yeah, during the first Gulf War, like a lot of people don't know, but when the USS Stark got hit by the SS missile by the Iraqis, at the time, the US and Iraq were allies. Yeah. And we were the first aircraft carrier out there to assist. Yeah. We were on our way to Africa, and we got diverted to go there and assist them with a bunch of sailors got killed and everything else. And then later on, on that same time frame, an Iranian, um, the silkworms that they had, they missile out one of our ships. The wow. general public don't know this information, oh, but it's been a wow. while though. So yeah, yeah. And then we had. So you to can tell it now. This <laughs> yeah. is the first time we're hearing about yeah. it. Yeah. So we had to jam it, and at the time, we. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean you have? You had to jam. We, we have an ea 6 b prowler. It's a it's an aircraft that's we on the ship. It has four pilots, uh -huh. and it's electronic jammer. So it patrols with the ship. Oh, got it. So yeah. if they see any. Um, misses locking up they can just jam it you can jam it and it yeah. explode or and it goes it just, somewhere it just else stop. yeah it stops and drops yeah. down into the water yeah so it doesn't fire wow and then so when that happened now we realized that it was an act of war so we were on a 24-hour alert to go bomb iran wow a lot of this is like you know back in 87 yeah and yeah. we got stand down because i guess congress never approved it yeah. At the time, I think it was Ronald Reagan was the president. Yeah. Yeah, so that was scary in itself because two of my shipmates, one attempted suicide because he, he just freaked out. He couldn't deal with it. And one, like, basically, like, just went AWOL. Like, basically, just went on the ship and just went off, said he's not dealing with this. So a lot of things happened. And me, at the time, I was, like, 19. And you're looking around and saying, whoa, uh, yeah. what did I get myself <laughs> into? Help me out here. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty tough. It was pretty rough. You yeah. Know? So that was my coming to America experience. <laughs> <laughs> From the island of Jamaica, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So what happened after that? You, you, you got out of the Navy. I got out of the Navy and I got to Florida. Basically, I went to Texas first. 
for a short period. Yeah. And then I went to Florida to go attend college and I played soccer. But then when I moved, I went to Miami to, yeah. to come back to New Jersey because this is where I used to live in yeah. New Jersey. And then um, a friend of mine whose who's mom, she's like a second mom to me. She said, why don't you stay in Miami? I was like, why am I staying in Miami for? Uh -oh. And basically, uh -oh. the rest is history, uh -oh. basically. <laughs> you got in trouble in Miami? Yeah, I nah. got married, got <laughs> kids, and everything else. That but that's doing. a good trouble. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> but then later on, I got in some other trouble, too. You got too. the other trouble. That, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you had to go to prison? Yes, because basically, I started doing concerts. Yeah. So I was doing major concerts, and pretty much, I was naive to a lot of things, but it's not like... I wasn't aware, but I took a lot of things for granted. Yeah. In the sense of when I was doing these major concerts, some of these guys were getting looked at by the federal agencies. Yeah. I didn't pay any mind because I was clam worried about any of that stuff. And then basically, I got called in to talk, to talk. Oh. And then I realized what they were doing. So basically, I was charged with a conspiracy. So, because I know information and then so on and so forth, other people talked and yeah. basically snitched on me, said I knew this and that. Yeah, And wow. then basically they were offering me to like work for that. I said, I can't do that. Whoa. I said, I, I couldn't, I said, I couldn't do that. So I told. So you was like caught in the middle somewhere. In the middle. Yeah. And I remember meeting with the prosecutor and she, she said to me, and this is the crazy part. She said, I know you're not involved with this, but I know you know who is. Oh, so shit. if you're willing, if you're not willing to help us, you're willing to go down for that. Yeah. And I said, I'd have had to do 10 years, but I'm not going to do that. I, I can't. I said, my life means more to me yeah. than what you're saying. So they, they fight dirty and everything else. So I just basically um, took, took a plea. Yeah. Um, my sentence was 30 months and I basically went to prison. Yeah. You know? And is it that? That's the time we had the time to sit back and say, hey, you know, I need to do something when I come out. Yes. And you, that's, you started planning? Yeah, I started basically because when I was there, I was like, my life is over. I said, yeah, yeah. man, my life is over. What am I going to do? And then I left my two sons. They were pretty young at the time. Yeah. And I had another son that was just born. He was maybe two years old. And so I went away and I'm like, what am I getting into my life? And I, I'm, I'm totally in a depressed mode at this point. Yeah. So now survival mode kicks in. So I'm like, I got to decide and then figure this out because mm -hmm. I got to do this for my sons. I got to do this for my kids. So after I came out, I was at a halfway house and I couldn't really move around like that. And then pretty much, cause my son didn't know what happened to me. So yeah. when I came back home, I told him I'd break everything down to them. and they. You know, they understood they for the understood most part. It. They understood. And they, you know, and then I, I vowed that I, I will not leave them again. So basically, I started being very skeptical of people I hang around with, yeah. friends I keep, so on and so forth. Yeah. You know, so basically, my life came around full circle then, and basically, I just got out of it. So that was it. Then you said, when did you decide to put the pen to the paper? Basically, um... I was working with my cousin, Sugar Minot, a, a very popular um, reggae artist. Yeah. And we were talking about a lot of things and the, his journey and uh -huh. the things he did, like he discovered musical youth, a lot of things he did. And I said, why don't you write a book? So after convincing him, he finally decided to, but then he passed away back in 2010. So then years later, I met Mr. Angelo Ellaby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then he, I was, and conversation with him, he said, why don't you write a book? I said, no, nah, I'm not, yeah, that, yeah. I, that's not me, I'm not going to do that. And he pushed and pushed and convinced Angelo me. Angelo does that, I know <laughs> Angelo. <laughs> he does that. Big up to Angelo <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> Angelo Ellie. Ellie. Yeah. That's the man right there. Yeah, yeah and there was a lot of people, Dion Wall, a, a bunch a of lot. people. So he pushed you into moving into the, the yeah. next phase so, of your life. Yeah, exactly. And then while I was talking to Mr. Kevin Taylor, I was very, because I've always been behind the scenes type of guy. Yeah. And he's, I'm talking to him and he's like, look, if you're going to make this happen, you got to be open and honest. Yeah. Because I was very apprehensive. I was like, I didn't really want to do this. I'm like, why am I doing this? So even after I finished writing it, I sat on it for like six months. I, I was like, can I really do this? Can I really do 
I was very, like, very, very apprehensive about it. Yeah, yeah. So finally, I decided to cut. It was, so, ironically, it was supposed to come out last year. So now it came out this year, and it's been very successful. It's, it's actually shocked me, because actually I proved myself wrong. Yeah, yeah. Because I didn't know I could do this. I, yeah. I just, but it has helped a lot of people, especially people that have been through the system and single fathers yeah. fighting for custody of kids. You know, and the whole routine of deadbeat dads that we're not there for our kids and we're deadbeat and we don't do this and we don't do that. Mm -hmm. It's an inspiration. And a lot of people have reached out to me and said, thanks. And I, pre I was like, you know, I was very grateful, though. Yeah. I'm very. So when you say prove them wrong, which is the title of the book, yeah. prove them wrong, what exactly are you talking about? I'm basically proving everyone wrong that doubted you. Because, like, me as an immigrant, my father never believed in me. My, my, um, my peers, a lot of them doubted me. You yeah. have naysayers who they call haters now. Sure. People doubt you and say yeah. you can't do something. My grandmother told me I wouldn't live to see 19 years old. Whoa. Because growing up, I had a very bad temper. I was like, you know, I, I had anger issues, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I just wouldn't back down. I said, this cat is not going to be around <laughs> too long if he keeps acting like that. <laughs> I wouldn't back down. And, Coming out of Jamaica you know, too, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just wouldn't back down and it was just... Yeah. So I had to prove a lot of people wrong. Like when I was doing concerts, uh -huh. like you can never do that, you will never do that. And I accomplished a lot of things in music, you yeah. know, a lot of things. And I, I really appreciate everything that and all the, the drive that got me to this point and yeah. everything else, especially like me being a father fighting for my sons and basically getting them to the point where they are where they are now and stand by, you know, stand by them and basically protect them and understand that you don't have to get into what I got into. You, yeah. you can learn from my mistakes. Wow. So now the triumphs, right? All the stuff is behind you. Now you get... Yeah. All that you look forward to. Hold up your book right there. That's the latest right there. Prove them wrong. Uh, let me see. Which camera got them? This one right here? That's right here. Prove them wrong. Yeah. All right. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. And a lot of people picking up, picking it up, right? Yeah. You know, available on Amazon. Amazon. So it's on Amazon. So yeah. I've been, you know, promoting this and pushing this and the response is really uh -huh. good, and I have a book signing on Wednesday at Ashford and Simpson's Sugar Bar in oh, New yeah? York. Yes, oh, all right. on Wednesday. So yeah. I have a, we have open bar. You know, we're gonna meet and greet, uh -huh. sign some books. That's yeah. beautiful. I mean, you know, you got this going on. You got the books and all that, but your kids are doing some things too. Yes. Tell me about it. Um, like. And my son, like, he joined the Navy also. And oh, all right. He got out of, dad's footsteps. Yes, and he got out. Um, my other son is into promotions, mm -hmm. like I did too. My nephew that I raised, basically, he got drafted in the NBA. Whoa! <laughs> but whoa for all of them. Is that, look, he's old enough? Yeah, Josh. Yeah, yeah he played for the Josh. Minnesota. He played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, 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 you know? all right. Good, good. Yeah, so basically he went to Memphis for one year. He was a one and done, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. Well, tell him to uh, buy a, you know, make your book a number one. Tell him to buy a, a I know, little, I know. A I, little, got, I got to talk to him about yeah. that, right? So, hey, man, I need you to buy about 200 <laughs> books, you know what I'm saying? Buy a thousand books. Yeah, you buy a thousand just, books and give them out give to them the out, you know, yeah, non profit organizations. Yeah, exactly. Schools. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, you know, and that's. there's another kid that I adopted, Youssef. Uh -huh. Yeah. He's at University of Yale. All right. Yeah. yeah. He's a junior now. He's going to be graduating. Um, he also plays basketball, too. Uh -huh. So he has a chance to even play pro overseas. Good, good, so good. So there's a lot of things I like help to mold these young men. You came a long way, man. I know, you man. You came a long way. <laughs> Proving them getting wrong, bombed right? out, Getting bombed in the middle of the ocean in the Navy and then coming out and messing, messing around and having to do a bid and jumping out and getting into... And no. the, the depression and everything, yeah. you know, depression it, within itself is big. You, you know, know, funny enough, when I, out of that. when I went to Australia, there was a shirt way back in, said, been there, done that. Been there, done that. You know, and yeah. was, it became a big thing afterwards, like, been there, done that. So I tell everybody, man, I've been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. You know. What's in that book that you think um, 
will highlight or a tip that will be inspiring to the youngsters that, that want to pick up your book too? Basically, the road to success is never easy. A lot of people can tell you and you talk about all the other people that went through the road and the Tyler Perry living in his car and everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been around artists like nobody, like DJ Khaled. I knew him when he didn't even have a car. Right, right. But Khaled is a, is a grinder. He grinds a lot. Oh, he works man. hard. I remember when Pitbull was the same way. I knew all these guys from back in Miami. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the first shows that um, big show that Cali was on was on my show. I was the first promoter to bring Sean Paul to the U.S. Whoa, you know, okay. so a lot of things I did, and basically people tell me that I couldn't do it. Right, right. So the inspiration in this book is like that someone can read it and say, you know what, if I can do it, you can do it too. Yeah. If you if your mind can believe it, your body can achieve it. Yes. You know, yes. it's just a matter of don't let the naysayers say you can't do something. You can always figure it out. It's, it may not be easy, yeah. but it'll be worth it, you know? So that's basically what it is. So you, you, you have another one behind this one, or are you gonna just, yeah. let me work this one right here, then? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, part two yes, and sir. number two coming out? <laughs> hey, everybody keeps saying that, hey, who knows? You never know, who knows? it may be a thought, it may be just a thought right now until you pull it out of the brain. I and know. Take the pen and put it to the paper. I know. Maybe I can hit a 50 cent and do a TV series. <laughs> <right there. laughs> That's good. So your next book signing is where again? At the, the Sugar home. Bar. At the in, Sugar Bar. Yes, right next to Central Park. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. the Sugar Bar this Wednesday, 7 o'clock from 7 to 9 p.m. Okay, good, good. All right. 7, 7 to 9 p.m. Yes, sir. Get out there, sign up a bunch of books. And yes, sir. Social media. Social media, you can find me on Instagram, um, Drew Minot, on Twitter, Facebook, yeah. Andrew Minot, and my website, anchorminot.com. Yeah. And you can also go there, you see upcoming events, what I'm doing, everything that's going on, and so on and so forth. Prove them wrong. Prove them wrong, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew Minot, uh, author of Prove Them Wrong, Navy vet. Thank you for your service Thank again. You. And thank you for all you're doing and helping other people get what they need out of life. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're also it. a music promoter. Thank you. Yes, big sir. Big time. Big yes, time. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's show. We want to thank our guests for joining us, you, our viewers, for tuning in and checking it all out. You can follow us on Bronxnet TV for continued coverage. And uh, we want to thank you for letting us share in the space and time with you. Join Kevin Aline, Darren Jaime, and Rena Valentin on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for the all new episodes of Open. And I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser of the Dr. Bob Lee. I love you all. Peace.